the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 21, Exodus 8 to 10, Moses and Pharaoh's Nine Negotiations. Although God persuaded Pharaoh for six months, showing many miracles, his folly led to the rupture of negotiation. First point. For six months, the Hebrews and the Egyptians each get to know God in their places. God tells Moses that the Hebrew nation will become God's nation, and that they will live as a holy people in a kingdom of priests. And to the Egyptians, God calls them Pharaoh's people. This was not in order to favor the Hebrews, but to let Pharaoh and the Egyptians know about God. Furthermore, it was in order to show the Egyptians of what they were to experience from now on. For the next six months, both the Hebrews and the Egyptians experienced God's miracles. Second point. During the six months, Pharaoh checks on the land of Goshen three times. What occurred for six months in Egypt through God was something that had never before happened. Out of the nine plagues from the false flag flies, God distinguished the land of Goshen. This was so that the Egyptians could know God. Due to this, Pharaoh started to send his men to the land of Goshen to check what was happening there. The first time Pharaoh sent his men was during the fifth plague, the death of the Egyptian livestock. The second was during the seventh plague, hail. The third was probably after the death of the Egyptian firstborns. After experiencing the final plague, Pharaoh urgently called for Moses and Aaron. If Pharaoh showed that the Hebrew firstborns had died as well, chances of him letting the Hebrews free would have been low. But the death of only the Egyptian firstborns was indeed the final straw. Third point, Pharaoh rejects advice from both his magicians and his servants. Pharaoh tells Moses and Aaron to leave Egypt after the death of his firstborn. But after a few moments, Pharaoh quickly changes his mind. We see Pharaoh changing his mind three times. The first was after the fourth plague of the flies. The second was after the seventh plague of the hail. The third was after the eighth plague of the grasshoppers. Pharaoh failed to listen to the advice of his magicians and servants who had forewarned him about the Hebrew God. Fourth point, whilst the Pharaoh was going back on his promise three times, God had proclaimed that the whole earth is mine. God, through Moses, proclaims to Pharaoh that the whole earth belongs to him. The whole earth is the Lord's. In other words, it was to clearly tell Pharaoh that Egypt was not his, but God's. When Moses first appeared in front of Pharaoh after 40 years, he told Pharaoh that the Hebrew nation had to take a three-day trip to the desert to make an offering to God. To this, Pharaoh claimed that he did not know this God. But after experiencing God's miracles for six months, Pharaoh confesses to Moses and Aaron that this time I have sinned, the Lord is right, and I and my people are in the wrong. To this, God replies, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? God wanted Pharaoh to be obedient and humble towards him. Fifth point, 
Sparrow still looks back at the historical records and refuses to do what is right. After the fourth, seventh, and eighth plagues, Pharaoh calls for Moses and Aaron and claims that he will free the Hebrew nation if the plague stops. But as soon as the plague stopped, he changed his word. Pharaoh had actually got this idea from Joseph's father's funeral. During Jacob's funeral, the children and the livestock remained in Egypt and only the adults went to the cave of Machpelah. Even in such a state, Pharaoh was looking for any excuse. But of course, Moses could not accept Pharaoh's terms. Nine plagues and six months later, Pharaoh completely rejects the negotiation and ultimately ends up seeing the death of his firstborn. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tong Doc Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does. The way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tom Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth that God enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel that healing that comes from mouth to mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app. 